Fighters Only Television here in Nottingham, England, and it's Saturday, it's uh, around midday, so not too long to go now before tonight's UFC on Fuel TV 5 event starts. And one of the referees in the case tonight will be Mr. Mark Goddard, uh, definitely the UK's number one, probably the world's number one referee. Is that <laughs> fair to say, Mark? I know you're, I know you're a modest type, but uh, do you object when people call you the world's number one ref? It's a matter of opinion. Uh, you know, I may be a modest type or something, but that's a matter of opinion. Uh, if you want to call me that, <laughs> do you know which uh, which fights you're refereeing tonight? Yeah? Uh, no, we never do. We never do until uh, it's probably the most commonly asked question uh, I get. But we're never told until we um, show up at the venue that evening. So it'll probably be about five thirty, six o'clock tonight, and uh, we'll get our assignments. Does it ever occur? Like obviously, you've been on the UK scene for years and years, um, so you'd be pretty well acquainted with say some of the UK fighters and stuff does it ever happen where you, you would get a fight and um, say I can't referee that fight because I know the guy too well or yeah I mean it's it's weird because you know I think for, for, you know for myself you could probably draw a line between me and any fighter in the UK at some point somewhere you know our paths have crossed in, in many ways but generally if, the, if there's something too close to home then I will just let the guys know in advance uh, you know there's a classic one was uh, like Vaughan Lee. When Vaughan Lee went to the UFC, he made his debut in Birmingham, and I'd trained Vaughan in the past and, and been in the same gym as him and, and, and you know worked with him uh, many years ago. Um, you know, not for a long time, but it's things like that. I have to be open and upfront and declare, and it just it just separates me out so that in the, you know in the eventuality of somebody, you know, uh, you know something happens, it just it just clears things up and takes the ambiguity away and uh, it just makes things more professional. Do you ever find yourself feeling like any kind of uh, emotional involvement or investment in something? Again, say with, with fighters you know, or you've been around for a while where you're watching the guys in, say, bottom position getting smashed and, you know, the fight isn't in danger of getting stopped, but he's, he's taking some punishment and, uh, you know, you feel kind of bad for him, I guess. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, every fight, I mean, uh, you know, I think that's what, that's my separation, if you like. Uh, you know, a lot of people talk about uh, referees. Um, do you have to have fought in the past to understand? And you know, I'm not saying it's a prerequisite, but it's always stood me in good stead. You know, I, I don't referee fights solely from my mind. I referee them from the heart. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm emotionally involved with this thing. You know, in, in many different levels, and you know, from a psychological point of view, I, I, I can see and I can, I can, I can smell, I can taste what's going on in a fight sometimes. Because I've been there, I've been there in the good, and I've been there in the bad, and you know, yeah, you know, the psychological thing. I think it does, it, it, you know, it does give me an added advantage, and um, it's it's helped me out on more than one occasion. I think. What I was kind of driving at there was like, um, you know, because obviously I work with the magazine, have done for a number of years, and uh, when you work, sort of, especially with the UFC. You know, you get to know a lot of the fighters and stuff, and uh, sometimes I, I'll do two pre-fight interviews with guys that are set to clash, like on this card you've got John Maguire and John Hathaway, and you know, they've been around for a while, or uh, say Stefan Struve I know quite well, and he's fighting Mirchic, who's also a really nice guy, and I think it's a shame that one of them's got to lose, you know, it'd be nice if they could just get in there and have a hug, and everyone could be a winner, but it's a hard sport. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, as I said, you could draw a line between, or draw a line from me to, you know, to many fighters, many camps, you know, we're, we're, sort of a lot of us have came up through this together um, but at the end of the day you know I can get close to fighters but obviously still maintain that integrity and that professional distance you know that those guys know you know like I said I'm I, I like being my own man and you know it's the same in the UK I like I like to I like to come alone I like to leave alone you know and, and that's the that's the role that I assume I have to do that I can't get I suppose it's like other professional roles you know that you know that lines there that you know the the uh, the personal involvement I, I have to draw a line between that and I'm there to do a job and that's all I look out to do integrity and professionalism you've just mentioned yes you know what's coming how do you uh, feel about the standards of integrity and professionalism in refereeing in UK MMA and MMA in general I integrity and professionalism I, I could I can do a seminar for people I could spend a, a thousand hours with someone. You can't teach integrity. You can't teach professionalism. You either have it or you don't. And you know that that's that that's the bottom line. It's a, you know it's a simple fact. Um, you know, as a referee, 
you know, even myself, I'll talk about myself, is people may disagree with me sometimes and, and they, may, they might not necessarily agree with what I've done or what I've said. And hey, you know, that's life. I think you can attribute that to, um, to any person, any professional. But what I pride myself on is you may disagree with me all day long, but you will never point the finger at me from, uh, from uh, a professional sense or in a, you know, integrity. Like I said, you know, my standpoint in the UK, obviously, you know what, you know, it's been, it's been hard earned, you know, you had to carve it out. And that's what I say to would-be uh, would um, officials and referees. It's a bit like a fighter. There's certain ingredients that you can't teach a fighter, you know, heart, etc., etc. And I think the same goes for an official. I tried to explain to them that when you move on to the international stage, it's not just about your performances in the cage. It's, a, it's about the whole package, how you conduct yourself and how you talk. And, it, you know, people look up to that and they'll hang off it. You know, it's, it's just uh, it's the role of a ref, I'm afraid. It's, there's many things that come to it, not just what you do in the cage. John, especially on the local circuit, the kind of small to mid-level shows, it seems to me there's a there's a perception or perhaps a lack of respect for the officiating part. I've seen things like uh, audience members being pulled out and given fifty quid to be a judge, you know, things like that. Yeah, I mean that, that's the, <laughs> you know, that's the, 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 you know, there's many things, um, you know, from a non-licensed point of view that that goes on in the UK. Um, safe to say, you know, from from my point of view, the shows who I work with. I mean, I've always seen how I, I turn down more work than I accept simply because these, they're not ready for me. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. What I mean is, is you know, my reputation and my, 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 I have to look after that. So if I'm going to go and work with a show, there's certain, there's certain levels, certain demands, you know, as a minimum I'd like to make. Um, but, you know, like I said, that, that comes down to the officials. They can either choose to, they can either choose to ignore something or they can choose to act upon something. And I think that, you know, dubious practice and, and things that go on on, a, on an unlicensed front, no matter what we do, to some degree, it will always be there. It'll always be there. So you're running courses in, uh, is it refereeing and judging or just refereeing? It's a seminar for referees and judges, yeah. And what's, you, what's the turnout been like and um, what kind of results are you seeing from it? Are you happy with how things are going? Yeah, I mean, the turnout's been phenomenal. You know, I've been taking the course, England, Scotland, um, Wales. I've been over, uh, obviously, um, before the UFC went to Sweden, I went over to, to, to try and do a seminar for their officials and obviously bring, bring the unified rules to those guys. Um, and the way I see it, it's sort of like, there's two ways of looking at it. I'm throwing the net out far and wide, but I'm also dragging it in at the same time. And it's sort of like, you know, it's a best practice guide. For me, you know, if I sit at home and I hear something, that, or, you know, a certain thing happened at a show and it, it unnerves me, it makes me sad because, you know, I, I love this sport dearly. And, you know, look, this is not a perfect world. You know, like I said, and as humans, we're all gonna make mistakes, but if I can equip as many people as I can to, you know, operate on the same level, just, you know, standardization, uniformity, I want to take out the, the ambiguity and, and you know, the, the hard and fast, simple unknown facts. That's what my seminar is about. It's, it's about, there's a lot of things there for, for discussion and interpretation, but there's also an incredible amount that's there that is, you know, the, you know, the rules of MMA and the same for the criteria in judging, the hard and fast things that I want to get out there to people. And, you know, the, the more I can do that, you know, it's the better for the sport all round. Your seminars must be really, really good because I'm reliably informed that one person went on the course and he was so impressed with what he'd learned and, and felt he'd learned so much that he phoned the UFC and said that he was now a Mark Goddard qualified referee and he, and he would like to referee a UFC event. And they said, give us your, your CV, what have you refereed before? He said, oh, no, no, no I've, just, I've just trained under Mark Goddard for the day. Yeah. Did you hear about this? Yeah, I do hear about that. You know, it's, uh, look, when I do the seminar, there's almost like a disclaimer at the beginning now and I say to the guys, look, um, you can't, you know, the important part is, uh, you know, I'm pleased first and foremost, these people are in the room and they're there to learn and that they're, you know, there to learn from me. But the thing I have to stress for them is that no matter what the industry, no matter what the profession, experience can't be bought. You can't bypass experience and you can't, you know, I'm not going to spend six hours with a, with a doctor and then walk into a surgery on Monday and go, where's my desk? 
yeah, it's not going to work like that. And I understand there, obviously, you know, the guys are eager and this, that and the other, but I advise them all to make yourself known in the local scene to start with, you know, ha have have degrees of, you know, uh, uh, targets. So what's the path then for someone, for someone who's starting out and think, right, I want to, be a referee yes they should have some sort of uh, MMA training background first of all I would say absolutely I mean as I said you know I don't think there's a prerequisite there for, for, for being a competitor I don't think there is but for at least training or understanding the facets of the game hey, you know that, that that's a given I'd be a bit nervous if I got in a car to have a driving uh, that and the, and the instructor was sat in the back and, well, I can't drive <laughs> and I'd be a bit worried um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, that side of it's important. And what I do is I advise the guys that, look, it's a time surf thing. Don't try and rush and don't try and cut corners. Get involved with your local shows. Get involved with the, the next door show. Then start looking to aspire to, to a national show and take your time and, and build your reputation and build your experience. You, uh, that's the same for any profession, any, you know, any sport, any profession. Um, it's... Like I said, essentially, don't try and buy time because you can't. Okay, good points. So, to conclude, integrity and professionalism are something that you hold dear. So, what would you think about a fairly well-known MMA figure who, say, ordered a round of drinks, coffees and so forth, <laughs> said he'd be picking up the bill, and then the next time we see him, he's walking past the window on the way to town? Everyone's capable of a small mistake, right? That slipped my mind. <laughs> that was just a mistake. I'm sorry, man. Did I not just buy you another coffee? Well, you've ordered a coffee. The bill's not been settled. Okay, with, uh, let's get the waitress here now so we can get it on camera. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Hey, Mark, thanks for the time. Thanks, Thanks for talking to us.